So picking up from where we left this problem off, we determined that this problem was stable and was determinant, and now our goal is to solve for our unknown reactions. So the first thing I look at is the free body diagram that we've already that we've already drawn here. And I can see we've got one, two, three, four, five unknown reactions. I have a single free body diagram, so I have too many unknowns. So what I need to do is break this apart. So let's go ahead and break this into three um, free body diagrams and we'll analyze each one. I'll go ahead and do that down here. So free body diagram number one has, un has the unknown reactions and it has our linearly varying load, but we also, points A, B, point C is a, a pin, free to move. So on point C, what I get is two reactions. And the two reactions I get from the other member, we'll call them CX and CY. And it doesn't really matter how I draw these. If I draw them to the left and upward, and I get a negative number for my answer, then I just know that I have uh, drawn them in the wrong direction. The big thing is I need to be consistent. So there's free body diagram number one. And I look at that and I said, well, I've got five unknowns and only three equations of equilibrium. So I could go ahead and start writing equations here, but I'm, I'm gonna start investigating the other free body diagrams as they connect together and see if I can solve one of them a little bit easier. So let's jump to free body diagram number two. Okay. Now free body diagram number two is six feet long and it's what we call a two force member. A two force member is one that can, if it doesn't have any internal loads, can only have an axial force. But I'm gonna go ahead and put, put the reactions on and we'll, we'll prove that to ourselves in a minute. So if CX is going to the left up here, I'll apply it to this side going the other direction. And CY is going up there, so I should apply it down. And similarly at the bottom, I get DX and I get DY. Okay, so again, I have three equations of equilibrium and four unknowns here. So I can't solve this one directly. However, I can start setting it up and seeing what kind of relationships I get. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's sum our forces in the x direction to the right being positive, and I get CX plus DX. So I don't know what they are, but I do know that CX has to equal minus DX. That's a nice simple equation that we can use in the future. Let's go ahead and sum our, moment, sum our forces in the y direction equals zero, and I get minus CY plus DY has to equal zero, so CY has to equal DY, okay? So there's another nice simple one. And let's go ahead and sum our moments about point C. I can pick any point, I'm gonna pick C, counterclockwise being positive, and you'll note that the moment of CX, CY, and DY about point C are all zero because they have zero lever arms. But I do get a lever arm for DX. And I, that lever arm is equal to six feet times DX. But that has to equal zero. So if I sum my moments about this point, there's nothing else balancing that DX. Therefore, I can conclude that dx is equal to zero. So I did get one solution out of here, and that's, that's typical. You may have an indeterminate structure, which this free body diagram is indeterminate, but I can still solve partially. dx being zero, plugs in up here, tells me cx is equal to zero as well. Okay, so cx is equal to zero. So those are really useful to me. I can go ahead and write that in right here, zero kips zero kips and zero kips. And I have this relationship here where CY equals DY, which is going to help me. So let's jump down to our next free body diagram. And I've put in our unknown reactions. I've put in our, our resultants of our inclined load. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put DX here and DY here. Now we know that dx is equal to zero from up above, so now we have 
for free body diagram number three. Okay, um, three unknowns and three equations of equilibrium. So we can go ahead and solve this one. So let's go ahead and do it. Let's look at the sum of the forces in the x direction to the right being positive, half d equals zero, equals dx minus three kips plus rex. But we know that dx has to equal zero from up here. So we can conclude from this that rex is three kips. Okay. And does that make sense? Sure, it makes a lot of sense. We have a horizontal force of three and the, t the vertical member up here in from free body diagram two really can't provide any resistance. So it makes sense that REX is three kips. Um, next question, we need REY and DY. So let's do, a, let's do a moment equation. Sum of the moments. Let's sum the moments about point D, counterclockwise being positive. And we get four kips times six feet, and that's going counterclockwise. That's going clockwise, so it's a negative. There's no moment of the three kips or REX or any of the loads at D. And the last one would be REY at eight feet. And that's going positive, so I add those up, and that has to equal zero. So REY has to equal. 1 eighth times 4 kips times 6 feet. I lost my negative sign by bringing REY over to the other side. That's 24 divided by 8, and I get 3 kips as well, REY. So I've solved for the bottom two reactions. They're both 3 kips. Because I got positive numbers, it tells me they're both going in the same direction, as I assumed. The last equation of equilibrium down here is the sum of the forces in the y direction have to equal zero. We'll do up being positive, and we get minus dy minus four kips plus rey. So solving that for dy, I get dy equals minus four kips plus three kips is equal to minus one kip equals dy. What this tells me is that because it's a negative sign here, dy is negative, that tells me that it's actually dy is going up. Okay, one kip. So I had made a bad assumption, but I caught it in the negative. So now we can back substitute through our other equations. If we jump up here, let me zoom out a little bit, and we can do some back substitution. We can take this and plug it in here, and we get CY equals DY equals minus one kip. Again, let's keep that negative in there or so we can we can track it through. And this brings us back to our first free body diagram. Now CY is equal to, we just said minus one kip, which is the same as saying it's one kip going down. Okay. Now we only have three unknowns in free body diagram number one and we can solve them. So let's go ahead and solve the easy one first. Sum, zoom out a little bit here. Sum of the forces in the x direction equals zero to the right being positive equals RAX minus CX. Again, we can see CX is equal to zero. So we can conclude right here that RAX is equal to zero. Makes sense, no horizontal loads applied. So no, um, no horizontal reaction. I'm going to sum my moments about point A equal to zero, counterclockwise being positive. The forces at RA uh, drop out because they go through that point. CX is zero. So let's just go left to right. I get eight kips per foot times nine feet over two, that's the area of my triangle, so the resultant is equal to eight kips per foot times nine feet, which is the whole loop bottom divided by two, and it acts at the one-third point. So the one-third point would be six and three. So that acts at six feet from point A, 
and it's going in a negative sense okay it's going it's going this way so I have to have a negative on there I get RB Y times six feet and then I get our CY CY so this one here is going this way and the last component I get is CY times nine feet okay the way I've got it drawn, CY is going this way, but when I put the negative in front, negative 1 in there, negative 1 kips, it's really important to watch that sign. I end up with 0 equals minus 8 times 9 times 6 over 2, that's kips per foot, that's feet, and that's feet, plus, that's a negative, plus 6 RBY, minus one kip times nine feet, okay? So that was a plus the way we were drawing it, but the negative comes from the negative one. And I can solve this for RBY. So R, in this case, RBY is going to equal one-sixth. Bring it over to the other side. The other two get um, positive signs. That's a 72 kips times 6 feet over 2 plus 9 kip feet and I get RBY is equal to what do I get? 37 and a half kips. Okay. And then the last equation I need to solve for is for RAY. So I'm going to jump up here. Some of the forces in the Y direction have to equal 0 up being positive, RAY minus, here's this up here is 36 kips, minus 36 kips, and then minus 1 kip, and plus 37.5 kips, and I get RAY is equal to 0 0.5 kips going up and I have solved for all my reactions. So if we zoom back out and walk through it again, the steps we took were first look at our structure and draw a free body diagram. So we drew the free body diagram here. We couldn't solve for all our unknowns here. We had five unknowns and only three equations of equilibrium. We want to see if we can actually solve this problem. So we check stability. Our reactions are not all parallel and they don't all converge at one point. So we've checked this odd case of, of stability. Then we jumped over here and we checked determinacy. We had nine unknowns. We had nine, three members times three, nine equations of equilibrium. So we concluded it was determinant. And then we started to break down our structure. At a pin connection, we only get two forces being transmitted, horizontal and vertical, so we applied them equal and opposite at each joint. And at this point, we were solving three separate free body diagrams. And as we identified the different um, values, we would back substitute in. And we've solved for all our problems. Thank you.